Well, so that's uh, my colleague Samuel Mbura giving us a roundup of all of the activities. We know that certainly this will be leading to the next phase of the reorganization of the new patriotic party, which equally includes not just the election of the presidential candidate, um, but then we'll be focusing as well on the parliamentary elections as well. Some of the MPs who've been subject to a lot of controversy includes the Dom Kovinya MP Sarah Adjwasafo, uh, who herself uh, is being subjected to some processes in Parliament, as you just learned from my colleague um, Parker Wilson there. But we need to speak to her and find out how she's been doing and whether or not she'll return and contest in that exercise as well and as to whether or not she would also be heading to Parliament to answer some questions. Fortunately, we've been joined on the lines now, specifically via Zoom, by Sarah Ajoa Safo. She's Member of Parliament for Domu Kabinya and also Minister Responsible for Gender. Thank you for joining us here on the polls. It's been a very, very, very long time. How are you faring now? Uh, Honorable, you have to unmute for, for us so we can all hear you. Okay. Yes, I can hear you now. How have you been? I've been well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well, except that I'm in Ghana waiting for you as well. <laughs> How has it been? I, I know. Um, I want to say a good evening to your um, listeners and everybody that's watching. And I'm grateful that you have me on this um, evening. Mm. There's a lot waiting for you. In fact, in Parliament, the processes and the hearings have started, obviously, uh, to hear some of your colleagues, including yourself, who have not been present in the House for some time now. Are you willing to appear before the committee? Are you willing to return and appear? Um, definitely, I, I will return. Um, as you know, um, my son has been unwell, and that is why I had to come here to the United States to, sh I mean, um, be the mother and the best mother that I could be. And um, I'm still here making sure that all that is settled with my son and all the authorities and the school, and it's still ongoing. Um, I've been a deputy leader of um, Ghana's parliament, and I know the rules, and I know that um, the Privileges Committee wants me to be in parliament. But as we speak, I don't know that I've been invited. I have to be served, and I, I'm not aware that any such thing has been given to me. I'm just hearing it from you. So all throughout the process, when it was announced even by the speaker that you'd be facing the committee, no official document has come to not even your office in Ghana communicating that to you officially? No. So this would then mean that you will not be appearing before the committee? As you can see, I'm here in the United States and I don't know that I was supposed to. I mean, if the speaker says that you've been referred, the committee has to sit and have its own modalities of how we're going to appear when and how, the dates, what information they're requiring, and I don't think I have all that information as we speak right now. Mm. And that's really surprising because uh, just a few minutes ago, we heard from Ricky Tegan, one of the mem members of the committee, stating uh, that your schedule is next. So how come you've not been communicated to? Because he's, he's quite sure that at least you are well informed about what the process is. Uh, and how the committee is going to go about its uh, proceedings. I'm just hearing it from you, and I got a message from my personal assistant that you guys wanted to talk to me about it, and that's why I showed up right now. Mm. Well, let, let's talk about this. Beyond the committee as well, we know, certainly, that you're a member of Parliament, so Parliament is back from recess, and there are concerns as to whether or not you would return and continue to function as a member of Parliament. Are you going to do that? Because aside the committee... Um, requirements, you are also a member of parliament and you've been elected by your constituents, but you're not showing up in parliament. So parliament is back. Will you be returning? I will be returning definitely to serve my people. I lead and serve the people of Domi Kwabinya. And I've done that for the past 12 years and I know exactly what my responsibilities are. And I'm definitely going to do that. But as you know, my son is unwell, and he has to transition to school, 
And as a mother, I have to ensure that all that is settled before I can resume my duties. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So going by what you're telling me now, it's practically impossible that we may even see you by the end of the month. With God, everything is possible. We've been praying. I've been doing a lot to support my, my children, which I'm required to do by law. And um, as you know, they're in a foreign land, and I have to comply with whatever I'm directed to. And until all that is sorted out, um, I have to do what I have to do, and then I'll return to my duties. So we have as to rule member, out, we have to rule out next minister. week. So we have to rule out next week. You may not return next week. If I'm served and I, I look at the condition and the circumstances right here and I'm able to, why not? But I've not been served earlier. I told you that. Mm. So let's go into the and conversation. And I know the rules. Right. And I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I've been a practicing lawyer for 18 years and I don't have to be served through Joy News. And I don't have to be served through a third party. And as we speak now, I don't think I've received any such um, communication or service from Parliament, and that's why I'm still here. Mm. Uh, but, but this controversy goes beyond your absence in Parliament. In fact, there's a lot of um, reaction from even party members. You're a member of the New Patriotic Party. A lot has happened, and I'm sure that you've been monitoring all of the developments as well. But here's the opportunity for us to know your side of the story. We've heard from your party. We've heard from your colleagues in Parliament as well. What's the Adjoa Safo story? <laughs> the Adjoa Safo story is exactly what I've told you about. And that's what um, communication I have sent to His Excellency the President. And he's very much aware of what is happening to me and my family. And um, that's what I expect every Ghanaian to understand. That I am not intentionally abandoning my duties and my responsibilities. I have served the people of Ghana for 12 years. I entered politics when I was young and I have done it and there has not been any past record of me absenting myself like this. That should tell people that there's really something that ought to be done with family and I know that you will put family first. So um, they should all start praying and keep praying for us and I know with God everything is possible and we're going to pull through it. I mean, everybody obviously would put family first, but that wasn't the narrative. Even from um, the likes of Kennedy and Japan, who we understand is very close to you, these are persons who went out publicly to state that it appears you were intentionally refusing to show up in Parliament. In fact, they go on to give some chilling accounts of how, for instance, the Chief of Staff came to your office or your house just to personally plead with you to support your party. Why did you give up on the NPP? I haven't given up on my party. I am still very loyal and committed to the party and to His Excellency the President. And I have had a record of the 2012 election petition from Domi Fabinger. That is what landed all of us in power today. And I will be the last person to put um, that fight, that courage, and that record that I fought for uh, into this repute at this time. So I'm not going to respond to third parties, what they think and what their opinions are, but I want everybody to listen to me. And what I'm saying is that I am still committed to the party. I'm still committed to the government and I'm still committed to His Excellency, the president and his family. I mean, you, you are a politician, so you understand the importance of public opinion, uh, the opinion of the delegates. Uh, in fact, your constituents also matter. So your narrative is also crucial. We've heard, for instance, that arrangements were made to you in the wake of the consideration of the E-Levy, for instance, for you to appear in Parliament. Some tickets were, were flown out to you just to try as much as possible to get you to add to the numbers. You didn't, of course, um, listen to the leadership of your party, and they are beginning to get worried. <laughs> I debank all that, allegations, and you know, they say silence is golden because when people throw in stuff at you that are not true and you respond immediately, you don't make sense to the people. And that is why I've kept quiet all these, I mean, these days and months 
listening to what everybody got to say. But what I know and what I'm telling the people of Ghana is that I had issues with family that I had to take care of. And that's exactly why I had to stay back. Mm, I and, when I come, and when I had to come, I did come. And when it was out of my hands that I couldn't do anything about it, I couldn't make it. And that's what it is. You're talking about the fact that the president is well aware of your condition. Is that possibly why he's keeping you at post as gender minister? Some have argued that by now you should have lost your job. That is their opinion. The prerogative lies in the president, and he knows exactly what I am capable of doing, what I've done for the party, what I've done for parliament, and he knows that I won't intentionally abandon my duties if I had no just reasons, and he won't allow me to stay for the family if he didn't know exactly what was happening. So, so what do you suspect then could, could be the motive of, for instance, uh, very high profile <laughs> persons within the NPP? For instance, you have the general secretary of your political party, uh, for instance, coming out publicly to say the NPP was considering at some point relieving you of the party ticket and declaring your seat vacant. You've had John Boydou say some of these words. How does that come to you and what do you believe may be the motive of your general secretary? I cannot speak to people's motive. What I can speak to is what I know. And what I know is I have been on the party ticket for the people of Domi Kwabinya, and I have given the highest votes to the party. And I'm the first woman to lead and I have led and my words and my footprints are there for everybody to see. And if I have to take time off at this crucial time, and I have done, I believe that the reasonable people would understand. And I believe he's reasonable as well. Mm. And we know that definitely, as you're indicating to us, you will return. But then the question about resuming your role as gender minister. We know there's a caretaker minister as we speak. Uh, acting in your stead. Will you take up the post immediately you return or perhaps <laughs> you are considering resigning from post? <laughs> that is what you're expecting or that's what other people are expecting? Um, well, it's all about you in the end because you say the president is well aware. So what will you do? Exactly. Will, you, will you take up the post once you return? And since I haven't resigned, it's implied that exactly what you're saying is the truth. When I touch down, I am going to do what I have to do as a minister since I haven't been relieved of my post yet. So why are you failing to give the people of Ghana and your constituents the exact date that you'll return to this country? A lot of people are anxious waiting to see, well, she says she'll come back, but she's not showing up anytime soon. When is Sarah Joseph returning? She's going to return when issues with family are well sorted out. And that is not something that I can predict. And that is not something that is within my power. And there is a lot within um, the United States that I don't want to share. And we're talking about a child and we're talking about um, medical stuff. Mm. And I don't want to put it out there because even if you ask for it from the authorities here, they're not going to give it to you. And I'm not going to give it out in public. So. Everything is going to work out, and I'm going to come back and take my position. Mm, I, so whatever anybody is saying, I think uh, we are in a reorganization mood in a party. People have interest. People have motives. People have things that they want to do. But I don't want to be the center of that, and I'm concentrating on what I ask permission from the head of state, mm -hmm. the commander-in-chief, and the President of the Republic that I'm going to do is right. exactly what I'm doing. Uh, and and uh, of course, I recall with joy when you came up on social media with your um, daughter sending that Easter message out there. You stated categorically that you were the Member of Parliament for Dom Kwabinya. That's what you said. But you were silent on whether or not you're still the Gender Minister. Uh, do you still consider yourself as Gender Minister of the Republic of Ghana? <laughs> that is so petty. I didn't even know this. <laughs> because, um, you know, um, there's a difference in our, um, with government 
uh, the executive power and the parliamentary duty that I have. And at that time, I had sent out things that I had to send out to the religious leaders in my constituency. And so that video definitely was for the constituents. And so I restricted myself to the people of Dominic Padena. And as the president of the republic, he will wish the whole country. So that's the difference. And that's the reason why <laughs> you didn't yeah, hear me mention Right. Uh, but, but even the seat that you hold, the Dominic Padena <laughs> seat, is under siege, as some are describing it. You're indicating to us that at least you've not been served. Uh, the committee may go ahead and pass whatever sanction it is that they intend to do. Are you not worried that you may lose the Dom Corbinia seat, particularly as the Speaker of Parliament, who even belongs to another political party, could simply go ahead and say you've breached the 15-day rule and then go ahead to declare your seat as vacant? I am not worried because I am very, very prayerful, and I don't believe only in the physical. I also believe in the spiritual. And I know my Lord knows exactly why I am not there, and he's going to fight my battle. So um, as we say, and I've always said, the battle is still the Lord's, and the Lord is going to fight my battle. I'm not worried at all. Even in my third um, term election, nobody thought I would win because you know exactly the situation that I was in. Nobody thought I could win. Even my primaries, people thought I couldn't win. But God made me win. So God is the final say. He mm. has the final say. I guess you're, you're learning from the president. He says the battle is the Lord's. But then in Parliament, your leadership has been questioning, or in fact divided over whether or not you sought the appropriate um, permission to even leave the country in the first place. The Speaker is giving a different account. Um, we've had some members of Parliament, even on the minority side, give different accounts as to whether or not uh, you have been uh, allowed to go out. Did you really seek permission and from whom? I sought permission and for the first time I did, as you know, and other attempts to seek further permission um, wasn't working out with my side. And so, as you, you know in my letter, I stated it to the speaker. That is why I'm writing to him because I've been a leader and I know exactly what I have to do. And so in the circumstances, I had no option than to write to the speaker to let him know that this is exactly what is happening. And there are interests and there are intentions and motives for people doing what they are doing. But what I'm saying is I am staying focused and doing what I have to do as a mother. I want to be the best mom because my ministry takes care of children. If I fail my family, I have failed my ministry. I have failed the people of Ghana, and that's mm. exactly what I'm doing. So, so from what and you're telling us, it appears you, you did not seek permission, right? I did seek permission for the first time. And the second was, time was it, But was it granted? <laughs> I guess that's what's in controversy right now as we speak. Whether it was granted or not, yes, yes. admittedly, and decisions like that lie in the bosom of the speaker. And so I am not to answer whether he permitted it or not. I have to do what I have to do as a member of parliament, which is that there's a 15-day rule. I am going beyond it. What do I do in the circumstances mm. as a reasonable person? And that's exactly what I did. All right, then. Uh, now, Sarah Joseph, we know that a lot of um, relationships have been lost. You've, uh, I mean, a lot of people, even within your political party, who used, used to be your friends, are, are no longer on your side, uh, giving the account of what has uh, transpired over the period. How do you intend to repair that relationship, particularly with your colleague members of parliament? Um, there are 275 members of parliament, including myself, and I have served as a leader, and I've built relationships. I've built friendships over the years. And if you notice, all the people that were speaking were people that are new in Parliament, and I forgive them for all that they say. But what I know is that I still have good relationship with my party. I still have good relationship in Parliament that I've built over the years, 12 years in Parliament. There are only 40 women. I served as a caucus leader for the women's caucus in Parliament. And you think I don't even have one woman who sympathizes with me because they're mothers? I don't believe that. Some, some are saying, are well, 
well, the belief is that some are upset with you because of the new demands, for instance, we're hearing that you're making. Uh, some of the claims were out there indicating that you are demanding to be, for instance, made deputy speaker, at a deputy uh, majority leader in parliament. I'm sure you've heard these claims as well. Is it true that you were looking out for the job that you previously held in the last parliament? Were you on the lookout to be re-nominated and, and subsequently approved as the deputy majority leader? That is so, so untrue. And, um, and that's what I'm saying. I forgive anybody who goes out there or who went out there to insult me because of um, hearsay and third party people or um, people telling them what they think they know, which is all untrue. And I, my, even my personal assistant has come in to debunk all of that. And the reason I didn't come out immediately to do that is that as a seasoned female politician, when people are speaking loudly and you speak, you're not heard. And this is the time for me to explain why I kept my silence. And my silence was because it was too rowdy, it was too loud, and now everything is calm and people will listen to what you got to say. And so... Um, an attempt to bring my reputation in disrepute. This I have worked for since I was 29 years old. I don't think I want to give in to that. And at that point in time, it was silence that was golden. That was the best tool for me to keep quiet, listen to what everybody had to say about me. Mm. And then at that time, respond appropriately and that's exactly what i'm doing yeah indeed and i believe that your constituents are listening the more watching us here on the joy news channel uh, what's your message to them your constituents who are worried who are saying well we voted for an mp we've not seen her in a long while what message do you have for them as we wrap up on this conversation i want to say um i still love them i still have them close to my heart i still want to lead i still want to serve I still want to be the mother of the constituency that I've always been. And they know me better than anybody. And they should remember that. And my son is forever going to be grateful to them for giving me time off to take care of him when he needed me most. Mm. And, and, you're, and you're raising a very critical point. You still want to be, the word is, the mother of the constituency. Um, we know that there is yet another primary that's imminent within the new patriotic party, uh, which will require that you see the mandate of delegates uh, before you are re-nominated as MP for the area. If that fails to happen, are we likely to see you go independent just to contest <laughs> as MP for Dom Kwabanya? And do you feel you'll win uh, or you stand a chance if you uh, get on that ballot as an independent candidate? I still remain loyal to the new patriotic party. I still remain loyal to His Excellency the President of the Republic of Ghana. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And time will tell and God has the final say and the battle still hits. Thank you. Mm. So two others are with you. How are you in touch with them? Henry Quarte and then Kennedy of Japan. These are people who are together with you in the, on the same hot seats, uh, some are saying and describing <laughs> it. Uh, have you been in touch with them as well? No, 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 no. And I'm sure family back home are missing you here in Ghana. Have you been in touch with your, parent, uh, your parents and also um, your brother as well? Um, have you been in t touch with them? And have you also explained your side of the story to them? I'm in touch with my siblings. I'm in touch with my parents, exactly. And I'm in touch with brothers. There, there are three of them and they're all in touch. Mm. And they are with me in prayers as well. All right then, uh, whatever the trying case may be, we're still supporting you in prayers and we're grateful that you've been able to make some time for us. Uh, wish you the best you. and probably we'll have a good time when you return to Ghana. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Your, your last words as we wrap up, you have anything finally to say? No, well, I just have to say thank you to you and to my team back home for holding the fort. It's not been easy, but I believe that in um, a digital world like this, even in times of um, absence, we can still make things work. We can still talk and get in touch with people. And I believe in that strongly. Thank you. Thank you too. We'll see you again.
Bye bye. Thanks. All right then. So that's uh, Member of Parliament for Don Kwabinya Sarah Ajwa Safu. Obviously, we know that uh, as we're talking about the MPP, they will be heading to the polls in the next 24 hours. We'll talk all about that and hear from leadership of the NPP when we return from this break. This is the poll.